It was the largest mass protest of global warming in U.S. history. And it took place this week in Washington at a coal plant owned by the U.S. Congress. The plant, which powers Capitol Hill, fired up the protesters, sending this message. America needs to get off coal. But as you're about to see, the story has an interesting subtext. America's youth is getting angry. Here's Bill Blakemore. Hopes were high among the youth at their morning rally on the West Lawn of the Capitol that this would help start a worldwide protest movement. It's about not only our present, but our future. Come snow or come shine, young people are going to stand up. This is what democracy looks like. They gave us this video showing thousands pouring into the Capitol over the weekend from around the country. This is no ordinary year, and we cannot live ordinary lives. By noon, some of the youth were joining another demonstration nearby. Ready to make history! A march on the coal-fired power plant that provides heating and cooling for the capital. Among them, elders in the anti-global warming movement, NASA's James Hansen, who in 1988 testified before Congress that man-made global warming had already begun. They're building more and more coal-fired power plants. And you can't solve the problem if you do that. Some of the organizers of this anti-coal demonstration told us beforehand that they expected to get arrested, that it would be part of their effort to get the attention of American legislators. Certainly everybody's willing to risk arrest. It's been 30 long years of public, uh, of a lack of a political response, and it's time for citizens to take the helm. You're a former director of the United Nations Development Program, the dean of the Yale Environment Forestry School, civil disobedience? Uh, it's been my mistake not to have done this before. A good job for every man is a just demand. While these rallies and marches were partly reminiscent of civil rights and anti-Vietnam demonstrations of the 60s and 70s, they're also aiming at a global audience and using 21st century tools. So the internet, the World Wide Web, is how you're organizing. Exactly right. Now we can be decentralized in all kinds of ways and on the same day have thousands of things going on and knit them together into one big thing. Show me what democracy looks like! This movement has been growing for a while. On YouTube, Al Gore's call for civil disobedience. Where it is time for civil disobedience to prevent the construction of new coal plants. Anti-coal ads, including this by Hollywood's Cohen Brothers. Clean coal is supported by the coal industry, the most trusted name in coal. Countless we websites worldwide. Meanwhile, youth were taking their message from the street into the Capitol building. Today, Congress will hear from perhaps the biggest stakeholders in the climate challenge, students and young leaders. 12,000 of your children who have tirelessly fundraised, educated ourselves, and come bearing solutions. We demand that you pass bold climate legislation in 2009. Waiting for the marchers at the power plant were the Capitol Police lined up in front of the entrances and less than a dozen pro-coal demonstrators. By mid-afternoon, demonstrators blocked the entrances right in front of the police lines. As in the protests of the 60s and 70s, there was folk music. And even a Kennedy making strong accusations. These coal companies, these coal barons, Massey Coal and Peabody Coal and Arch Coal, these are criminal enterprises. They waited to get arrested, but the police just stood there. It was time to adjust. They're not going to arrest us. So the victory is we did, we did surround the plant, we did shut it down for a number of hours, we got a point across, and then, I mean, we need to process this as a victory somehow. We shut them down! And that's what they did. How many people here have shut down a coal-fired power plant before today? All right, I'd like to see a show of hands. How many people now are going to go and do it again and again? Are you disappointed that you did not get arrested? A little bit, but you know, it, that's not the important thing. The important thing that was we had 3,000 people turn out here to launch something which will spread across this country. The sun about to set, they dispersed. Their next civil action is planned for March 14th in Chicago, along with a growing number of messages on the World Wide Web and hundreds of youth who say they'll keep lobbying on Capitol Hill now that they're learning how to. We're going to go see the staffer for Bill Nelson's office. For Focus Earth, this is Bill Blakemore in Washington, D.C.
Ironically, days before the protest, it was announced that the Capitol power plant would switch from coal to cleaner burning natural gas. Protesters claim this was an early victory, but some think Congress was preempting criticism they would have received in the wake of the demonstration. Next, leaders of the pack. Two of the protest organizers say America's youth is restless for change. And when you can't grow your money, grow a garden, a new trend that's an old solution for getting through hard times. Now it's time to take the Focus Earth Eco Quiz. How many pounds of carbon dioxide is the average American responsible for each day? Is the answer two pounds, 120 pounds, or 487 pounds? Find out the answer later in the show. As we just saw, there's a remarkable youth movement fueling climate change protests around the United States. So how are they gaining momentum? And what exactly is their message? Joining me today is Jesse Token. She serves as the executive director of programs for the Energy Action Coalition, a collective of youth organizations throughout the U.S. and Canada. Also, Erica Williams, deputy director and policy and advocacy manager at Campus Progress, which supports youth activism. Well, I have to say, I just had a chance to, to meet you in, down in D.C. 12,000 young people in this country. Is that number going to grow? 12,000 is just the beginning. Those are the leaders that are going to go back to congressional districts across this country and continue to build the power and public demand necessary to make action happen from our U.S. Congress. Well, if you talk about power and demand, looking at the Internet, I would imagine this is the center for all of this for this next generation. It is. I mean, we, we, as young people, we value the Internet um, a great deal because it's a tool that we can not only innovate and continue to develop and advance, but we're using it to advance and further our political goals um, and to help us organize, connect with people, not just across the country, but across the world um, that have the same ideals for what we want to see happen. And this, of course, led to the election of, uh, of uh, Mr. Obama. He was this was huge for, for the young people. It was. Um, we had over 25 million young people come out to vote this year, um, approximately 55 percent. This was an amazing year for turnout. And again, as Jesse just said, this is going to continue to grow. Um, this is not just a result of the Internet, but instead a result of kind of a growing sense of urgency for all the things that we want to see our country do considerably, um, in, in particular with relation to climate change. And you, you testified to Congress. This is a huge issue. And this is, this is the one where you need some power, you need some influence. Did you think that you accomplished that? And what was the reaction generally from those from the Senate and the House? I think we got a very strong reaction. I think that hearing from young people who have been directly impacted by climate change, seeing myself and my peers there on behalf of an entire generation that has so much at stake really resonated with folks like Representative Ed Markey. And we, we sent a very clear message that our presence on Capitol Hill last Monday was just the beginning, that we'd be in district meetings all across the country and that we'd be back to D.C. making sure that they step up and take the political action necessary. Why do you think your generation is so committed to this? I mean, compared to my generation, certainly my parents' generation, you are really the only ones really pushing for this hard. And you see 12,000 people down at that convention. It is. It's very different. Um, frankly, time is running out. We do not have a long period of time to fix this problem. Uh, it's not just about the future. It's about our present. This is about us breathing clean air. This is about clean water. Um, this is about corporate responsibility and government responsibility. It's kind of the nexus of all of the things that we think our nation should be and live up to its ideals. And I think that this generation recognizes that within the solutions to climate change and our energy crisis is an opportunity to fight for economic opportunity, to fight for healthier communities, to reestablish a better role for the United States and the international community. So it's brought young people from so many different backgrounds together, united in a fight for a clean and just energy future. When President Obama's in his campaign, this was a huge priority in terms of global, global change and, of course, independence for the United States. But now you've got this economic problem. Has he really now lost the ability to really pursue this, the kind of strength that you'd like him to do it? We have an opportunity to create 
a new green economy, through the investment in clean energy, through the creation of millions of new green jobs, we can help bring the United States out of its current economic difficulties. President Obama designated over $91 billion in the recovery package um, going towards green investment and investment in a clean energy future. I think what we've seen thus far, though, is that he needs both the political pressure and the political cover to be able to continue this work, and that's our generation's role. Well, you've accomplished so much so far. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you. And, and good luck. Thank you. Well, next, when the going gets tough, the gardeners get growing. Victory Gardens, victorious once again.